Chair will not grant, uh, now recognize himself for an opening statement. The New York County District Attorney's Office began investigating President Trump in 2018, six years ago. 2018. But it wasn't Alvin Bragg, it was Cy Vance. Southern District of New York, months later, concluded its investigation into payments made by Michael Cohen and determined no charges should be brought against President Trump. Of course, while this was going on, Alvin Bragg was running for the job, vowing to go after President Trump, <laughs> bragging about the number of times he had already <laughs> sued President Trump. Mr. Bragg ultimately wins and takes office in January of 2022. First thing he did, the day one memo. Ten-page policy memo to his staff instituting progressive, soft-on-crime, anti-victim policies. Not only armed robbery charges get reduced to misdemeanors. He instructed his staff, except for homicides, not to seek prison sentences for individuals. And guess what came next? Rising crime. During that first year, violent crime in Manhattan was at an all-time high. New York City saw a 23% surge in major violent crimes. In fact... We heard from some of these victims of a crime at our field hearing up in New York City 13 months ago. A mother whose son's murderers were allowed to walk free because of Alvin Bragg's soft on crime prosecutors. A bodega owner who was violently attacked, yet Bragg's office initially charged him. And finally, a father whose son was attacked in Times Square because he was Jewish. And Bragg offered one of his assailants a sweetheart slap on the wrist deal, even though he had previous run-ins with the law, showed no remorse, and was arrested while out on bail. A few weeks after this day one memo, Alvin Bragg told one of his prosecutors, Mark Pomerantz, quote, he could not see a world in which we, he would indict President Trump and call Michael Cohen as a prosecution witness. That's right, after campaigning on going after the former president, Alvin Bragg gets into office and realizes the case against President Trump is ridiculous. And that's why the Southern District of New York didn't bring it. That's why his predecessor, Cy Vance, didn't bring it. Everybody knew Michael Cohen couldn't be trusted. In fact, his former lawyer sat right in this room and told us we can't believe what this guy says. Michael Cohen's lied to Congress, he's lied to the FBI, and he's lied to court. It's not often you can lie to all three branches of government and yet become the star witness in a prosecution of a former president. Now, what caused Alvin, Alvin Bragg to do the 180-degree turn? What caused him to change? That special assistant district attorney, Mark Pomerantz. The guy Alvin Bragg had told he could not see a world in which he would indict President Trump and call Michael Cohen as a prosecution witness. That guy resigned in protest of Mr. Bragg's decision not to go after President Trump. And his fellow assistant district attorney, Kerry Dunn, resigned as well. And they leaked their resignation letter to the New York Times. And after that, the left begins their pressure campaign on Mr. Bragg. And suddenly the, quote, zombie case is resurrected. And also, never forget, in November of 2022, President Trump announced he was a candidate for president of the United States. And just a few weeks later, Alvin Bragg hires former senior Biden Justice Department official Matthew Colangelo to come up and run the prosecution. Someone who had a history of taking on President Trump and his family's businesses and had also worked for the New York State Attorney General. Alvin Bragg, partisan DA that campaigned on going after President Trump, whose newly hired lead prosecutor for the case also had a history of, talk, of taking on President Trump, had their case now in front of a partisan judge, a judge who had donated to President Biden, who imposed a gag order on President Trump, forbidden an expert defense witness from testifying, and also told the jury they didn't need to reach a unanimous decision. And there is the fundamental issue. No one knows what the federal crime is. Bragg and Colangelo bootstrap charges Federal prosecutors declined to bring into some kind of never-seen felony. Former Attorney General Robert H. Jackson warned us about rogue prosecutors. Former Attorney General said this in a speech 84 years ago. The speech was titled, The Federal Prosecutor. It applies to all prosecutors, though. Attorney General Jackson laid out a vision for how prosecutors should behave in, their, in a fair and just society. He stated, quote, Therein is the most dangerous power of the prosecutor, that he will pick people that he thinks he should get, rather than pick cases that need to be prosecuted. It is here that law enforcement becomes personal, and the real crime becomes that of being unpopular with the predominant or governing group, being, attacked, being attached to the wrong political views, or, in, an, uh, or to, in a way of the prosecutor, be in the way of the prosecutor himself. And that is precisely what we have here in this situation. Excuse me, in this situation. 
Alvin Bragg's prosecution of President Trump was personal, it was based on politics, and it was wrong. And we're going to hear from some expert witnesses today who will give us details into all that. With that, I yield to the ranking member for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we sit here today.